Likewise, my friends, there are 10 productive roles that managers play. And you may spot some of these roles in your own life, and I'd like to share them with you. Here's the first one. The facilitator. The manager who facilitates the process, who makes it easy for people to do their jobs. Who is always asking the question, how can I make things better? How can I help you to arrive at the right solution? What are some of the elements that are keeping you or your department or your team from accomplishing the mission at hand? They facilitate the process and in so doing make everybody feel good and powerful and strong. And people play well with the facilitator. Here's the second very positive role that managers play. It's called the enabler. This is the manager who teaches people how and why, not just what. This is the manager who takes a little extra time to say, I care about you and I want you to know why we are doing it this way. And so next time when you cross this bridge, you will know for yourself some of the ideas that went into the making of this decision. This is the manager that grows people instead of simply uses people. The third productive role that managers play is called the empowerer. This is the manager that generates enthusiasm, helps people discover better ways to do their tasks and their responsibilities, empowers them, gives them the authority, and when they make a mistake, does not clobber them, but says, it's okay, we all have to learn somehow. This is the manager who says, if you take risk out of life, you take opportunity out of life. As long as it's calculated risk, as long as you think through it carefully before you do it, go for it and make it happen. That brings us to the fourth role that managers play productively, and that's called the guide. This is the manager who sets a good example, leads people to peak performance, and does so by his or her own behavior. These are the managers who don't say, do as I say, but rather say, yes, indeed, do as I do. They're the guide. They show us the way, and they lead us to prosperity and success. The fifth role is called the encourager. This is the manager who helps people believe in themselves, lifts people when they feel down, but without assuming the responsibility for their problems. Do you know the manager I'm talking about? The individual who lifts you up and makes you feel very special and moves you along the way to success, but does not necessarily do the, do the job for you, does not necessarily assume all your responsibilities, rather just helps you to do them well. The sixth role is called the complimenter. This is the manager who tries to catch people doing something right and then rewards them for it. He always compliments in public and always criticizes in private. I don't mean by compliments that they're empty compliments that have no meaning, because if you give compliments coming and going day in and day out, the person who listens to those compliments is an intelligent human being. If they regard this compliment with any sense of significance, it must be a genuine compliment. It must be a compliment that the person says, I'm glad my boss noticed me doing something right. It makes me feel good that my manager complimented me on this project. Number seven, the peacemaker. This is the manager who works constructively to settle disputes. This is the manager who serves as an advocate to both management and workers. You know what I'm talking about? This is not the manager who simply passes the buck. This is the manager who says, management is here, employees are here. How can I build between those two a partnership for profit? How can I bring those two to understand each other, to work with each other? How can I build an understanding in management for the needs of employees and in employees for the needs of management? That kind of manager, my friend, is a magnificent person. Company person, but also a people person. 
And then the eighth productive role that managers play is called the communicator. Can you think of anything more important in human relationships than your ability and my ability to communicate effectively with each other? To speak in a way that people understand? To listen to people in a way that they know we care? To observe what's going on around us and about us in a way that we can catch facts and figures so we can do our job better? Communication ultimately is at the very heart of all we do. We're not machines, we're persons, and persons must communicate. The manager who knows how to explain to his or her people what to do and how to do it and why it's important that they do it is a communicator and we need more and more of those managers. Number nine is the challenger. This is the manager who shows people their potential without highlighting their failures. This is the manager who rewards people for their progress. Fair, yes. Accurate, yes. Does not give away anything that doesn't need to be given away, but is always tuned in to what's going with the people and how they can go to higher degrees of peak performance. And finally, the tenth productive role that managers play is called the evaluator. This is the manager who makes it clear what is expected. This is the manager who inspects the results and lets people know exactly where they stand. Don't you love the person who evaluates the process and shares with you in a loving way the results? You know at all times where you stand with them. There are no hidden agendas. You're not afraid of the unknown. You know where you are. And when you do something well, they reward you, and when you, don't, when you don't do something well, they tell you how you can do it better the next time. Let me ask you to do something for me. This little exercise will show you why productive roles that managers play and unproductive roles that managers also sometimes play interfere in the process of growth for an organization. Sometimes, people who work for you do not share your goals. They do not share your vision. They do not share your purpose in life. And we get ourselves in trouble when we do those things that are inconsistent with our purpose in life. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine for just a moment that this hand right here stands for the goals of your organization. This is what you collectively have agreed to be the goals of your organization. These are the things that you need to do to make your company successful. Would you please focus on that hand for me? All of you, just focus on that hand. Look at nothing else but that hand. It's very easy to do, is it not? You can focus on the hand. You can tune out all the other environmental interference and focus on that hand. This hand standing for the goals of your company. Now, would you please focus on this hand? This hand stands for your personal goals, you being an employee of your company. These are your personal goals. This is what you want to make of your life. This is the goals that you put down a piece of paper. I want to save money. I want to send my kids to school. I want to build a house. I want to retire with financial freedom, whatever those goals might be. Focus on that hand, please. Now do me a favor, will you? Can you now focus on both hands at the same time? Is anybody able to focus both hands at the same time? If you do, I want to send you to some science lab to be studied because it's impossible to do. You can focus on this one, okay? You can focus on this one, okay? But you can't focus on both at the same time. What would happen, my friends, if I were to bring your personal goals and if I were to bring your corporate goals together like this in one place. Now would you please focus on these two hands at the same time. Is it easy to do? Very easy to do. When the corporate goals and the personal goals became one, we were able to focus on them and commit ourselves to them completely. And that is true of managers too. 
The manager who plays productive roles certainly has skills, certainly has been in classes like this where they have learned new technology of behavior and understanding. But beyond that, this manager who plays productive goals cares about his or her people, cares about his or her company because they see their personal goals and their company's goals to be one and the same. You see, if you were to look at this chart for me for a second, You'll notice the black area, the yellow area, and the blue area. This one we'll call it tasks, the things that you have to do in your life. You get up in the morning, you go to work, you do what you have to do, you come back home, you take care of your family responsibilities, and so on. These are all tasks. The yellow area will stand for goals. These are the goals that you set for yourself in your life. This is where you are, this is where you want to go, and along the way you must accomplish these things. Those are called goals. And the blue area, the most important of all, is called purpose. Purpose. When you and I know what is our purpose in our lives, we are much, much happier. I have met many managers, in fact, I have worked with many managers who have achieved all their goals, would you believe it, and still are not very happy. And an unhappy manager can easily find himself sliding into unproductive roles because you and I act out our feelings, and, and those feelings that are in our subconscious mind become the very behavior that we carry out on a daily basis. The truth is, if I could take this chart and turn it upside down so that we must first define our purpose, then based on what our purpose is, then I decide what are my goals in life and what are those goals that are consistent with my purpose. And then ask the question, what tasks must I do to accomplish those goals which would eventually get me to my purpose. It's not what we do in life. What we do is we do a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things. And then we set some goals and we work hard towards achieving the goals and then we stop short of defining our true purpose. A manager in an organization has an incredible purpose to help the process move forward, to help individuals do what they do at the highest level of performance, and in the process to feel this great sense of satisfaction that this manager not only managed the process, but led people. And great things happened as a result of that process. In summary, in this ever-changing world, and with all the challenges that managers face today, you and I must always strive to learn and act out the productive roles that make us better at what we do, and to avoid at all costs the unproductive roles that take away our effectiveness as leaders in this changing world.